So before you ask, no, it didn't cost me 350. And this isn't from the Cretaceous period, but this pen from Sailor is definitely a beast in and of itself. Now we've looked at a few Sailors before in different shapes and sizes, but this one has something about it that has me thankful that I picked it up. Maybe it's the muted blue color of the resin, or the black ion plating that's normally yellow or rhodium trim. Or maybe I was just bought in by the fact that it's a North American exclusive. What can I say? No matter my reason for getting it, I just wanted to make sure it had a crazy nib to match, which this one definitely does. So let's unbox the Loch Ness and take a look. Now this week, we're going to skip the TLDW and jump right in. Right off the bat, we've got a little bit of a departure from the usual slipcover. Gone on this one is the sailor window, and if we look at that faux leather inner box, it seems slightly lacking on the gold leaf trim. It also is a bit of a chunkier box compared to the others that we've had with previous pens. Now, opening up this box, we have our standard pen pillow with the Loch Ness Monster, but we also get a little bit of a departure from the norm. I guess this would be the warranty void if removed sticker equivalent, so cue the legal voice. Attention. Please note, the nib on this pen is specifically ion plated to give unique color. Only Sailor inks should be used with this pen to avoid damage to the nib plating. Any damage to the nib caused by the use of other branded inks will not be covered by the Sailor Standard Warranty. Hmm, I guess I should have read that before putting Pilot Blue in here. Oh well. Anyways, let's take a look under the pen pillow. On top is the plastic baggie where the converter was up until it got stuffed into the pen. Under that is the one year limited warranty card, which I've already voided by using Pelican and Pilot inks in this pen, as well as letting my dog sniff it. I'm pretty sure that's not covered by the warranty either. Below that, we've got two cartridges of Sailor Black ink, which are gonna remain unused. And finishing up the contents, we also have the longer version of the warranty that includes a care, use, and filling instruction. So that's pretty much it for the box. Now let's look at the pen. First thing of note, this one is based on the 1911 body. Second, side by side here with my Stormy Seas, it's quickly apparent that I went with the more mini monster instead of the 1911 large variant. Honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that the nibs are completely different on these two, I wouldn't notice the difference in feel. Side by side here, we've got the 1911 large coming in at about a quarter inch longer at 5.56 inches while capped, and uncapped, it maintains that quarter of an inch lead. But the more important part, is going to be the section. Diameter-wise, we're pretty close. I mean, we've got 0.37 inches for the Loch Ness versus the 0.45 inches of the Stormy Seas. I mean, feel free to do the math on the circumference, but honestly, the difference there is just not that noticeable for me and my medium-sized grip. The sections are also pretty much spot on from thread to flange. Also, you can see the difference in the trim choices here where the Stormy Seas has the more traditional rhodium trim and the Loch Ness is carrying the ion plating furniture. Speaking of which, let's talk about this trim choice. I honestly don't know how to feel here. While I agree that yellow gold or rhodium would not pull off the cryptid look that Sailor was going for, I feel that a matte finish on the trim would have gotten them much better of a look and helped the furniture hold its own on this design. That aside though, I do like this choice of blue. Much like another blue pen that I picked up at the same time, this classic blue has a good look to it that really helps the pen look at home on my desk. Now, before we get to the writing sample, let's take a quick look at the star of the show. I've used quite a few different Sailor nibs, but this one is both my favorite and least favorite all at the same time. I like the sheer amount of ink that you're going to see put on the page in a bit, but I also like the utilitarian squared off design. Where it falls apart for me though, is that my inexperience with Sailor nibs still has me holding the pen at a non-optimal angle every so often. So as we move on to the writing sample, keep that in mind. Some of the irregularities that you're going to notice are more me messing up and not the pen itself. Roast me in the comments, I definitely deserve it on this one. Which brings us home to the part that gives you a little of an idea of what this nib can and cannot do. For this sample, we're in the Masubi Tomoe River Notebook. The first thing that's gonna show is that ink flow. From day one, I've been a really big fan of the dynamics this nib is able to pull off from any ink. And I especially like the treatment that it gives Pilot Blue. As long as I've got the nib to paper at the appropriate angle, I get a good look from the lighter mids all the way to sheening, but also get that nice italic effect due to the crisp corners of the nib grind. So you do get that extra flair with your writing. But the part that is going to matter more than the line width and style is ink flow. I honestly haven't had any problems in that area. 
I mean, aside from human error, there have been no skipping, no hard starts, and this nib has, you know, it's done a great job with both my Dry Pelican 4001 inks and this Medium Dry Pilot Blue. And that's what matters most to me. And overall, I really like what we get out of this Loch Ness package. So that's going to do it for Old Nessie. And unlike the cryptid, this one is real. So if you like the video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, don't drink the ink.